also haven't quite been challenged. Maybe he's the only team that's really been on them. But I'll tell you what, I'm expecting another win getting involved on the offense. We saw a reverse to him. We saw a couple touchdowns. Ray Wasella. Let's see if they continue to pass the ball of Connor McChesney to Wasella. Yeah, really good uh, passing week last week. We're going to do the national anthem here. All right, and with that, we are getting set for the kickoff. The Bison will receive, as Brandon just said, and LaBeouf. Let's see what they come out with first. We mentioned that the pass game was on point last week against Gerard. Harbor Creek is a little bit more athletic. It's going to be interesting to see if they go to Justin Lucian more often early on. Last week, we didn't really see him get going until the second half when they were trying to run out the clock. All right. Turn a sponsor. Support for Fertile Buff Bison football play by play on the sunny 105.7 sports stream is provided in part by the Cory Federal Credit Union. The Cory Federal Credit Union would like to wish the Bison the best of luck this season. The Cory Federal Credit Union has been serving the community since 1958. They offer a wide range of financial and banking information and services for your business. The Cory Federal Credit Union is located at 728 Worth Street in Cory, 56 North Main Street, Union City, 315 Main Street in Spartansburg, and online at www.coryfcu.org. Sunny 105.7 Sports Stream links Cory Federal Credit Union, a not-for-profit organization, for their support of Bison football play-by-play. -play. All right, McGuire getting set to kick off for the Bison. And the kick is going to be a little squib kick. Yeah, nice little pooch kick there. Bison have been known for that. Coach Blows has that special teams background. They're trying to catch Harbor Creek sleeping. Number 24 was on top of it, though. Jake Powers, the junior running back. He lands on it. Harbor Creek's going to have good field position here to start. And as I mentioned during the pregame, Nicholas Cray, the senior, already committed to West Virginia to play football. LaBeouf can't let him get movement off the line. He's going to come after trying to attack those interior D linemen and Jake Zimmer and Caleb Stover. Stover has to be on top of it. And Heath Betta is going to be under center. It's going to be Lance Brown for game Lance Brown gets a gain of six, and then Jace Wallace is going to bring him down. So already we're seeing that Harbor Creek offensive line get movement off of the ball. Low man wins. They were quicker off the gate, and Harbor Creek's going to have very second and very manageable. All right, and that's it comes on the field. It's going to be start of the first quarter here. The score is still 0-0. And Carson Pepe is not on the field right now. He was dealing with a concussion last week. We have Ray Wasella in at safety, and then we have Connor McChesney and Hunter Villa as the two corners. Another run with Brown, going to be close to the first down, just a little bit short. Going to bring up third down for the Huskies with 11.15 to go in the third. The 
Third down and very short here. It comes and turns into a game of 1-2. Harbor Creek's been able to get some movement off of the ball. LaBeouf needs to fire and shoot their gaps hard here. All right. And Harbor Creek's going to have one receiver out wide to the left. Quarterback's under center with three backs behind them. Hands it off up the center to Lance Brown. Number one, Lance Brown. We'll see if that's enough for first down. I think it is. Yeah, the Huskies start out with three straight carries to Brown, clearly trying to establish him here early on, and all the runs have been up the middle. That's going to open up the pass game for a guy like Betza to roll out, get a pass, get a roll action, get a bootleg going. And it's going to be first. Oh, yeah, first down, and the ball is going to be on the 48-yard line. Yeah, the change moves a little slow there. All right, and Betts under center, looking to pass. Has numbers 26 wide open down the field to the left, and it is caught, and that's going to be a touchdown for Harbor Creek, number 26, Samuel Brady with a touchdown. Yeah, as I just said, that those runs up the middle are going to open up a rollout, a play action, a chance to pass down the field. Betza does deliver a great ball to Samuel, and there you go. Huskies with the early lead. Great job for the Harbor Creek offense. If you're a coach, but Zizia, you can't be more thrilled with that start. Harbor Creek up early. Yeah, that was a beautiful pass. Looks like they're going to go for the extra point here. And number 27 comes in for Harbor Creek, Aiden Bogan. Ball is snapped, and it's going to be a bad snap, and the kick will actually not go off here. And yeah, since it's an extra point, as soon as that ball hits the ground and there's somebody there, it's a dead ball. It's not like a field goal. So Harbor Creek cannot convert on the extra point. It's six nothing with 10:04 to go, and I'll tell you what, that might come back to bite them. The Buffs offense, if they can get going, that at every point's going to matter. All right, 10.04 left in the first quarter here. Huskies are leading 6-0 against the Bison. Again, it's a bad snap on that last play there. All right, and Harbor Creek's kicking team will come out here. Yeah, last week we saw the little buff offense get a little bit more versatile. We saw them dig into the dead chart a little bit, whether it was at tight end with Connor Sell and Rafe Blos rotating in at tight end. We saw a bunch of receivers get some more time with Carson Pepe out with injury, whether that was Dominic Dorman, whether that was Hunter Villa. Everybody was getting reps. Ray Wasella is still obviously the wide receiver one here, so you're going to want to get him going. But let's see if the Bison continue to rotate in and out and keep everybody fresh. All right, and the kicker is going to be number three, 33, Brandon Konezik, or Konezeki, excuse me. And the kick is off. It's going to be deep. He has a boot on him. And Wasella cutting up the left side of the field. And he is out of out of bounds better on the 30 yard line. Yeah, Wasello found a crease to his left and got a nice return. Connor Sell blocking out in front of him. It was close to a hold, but made sure his hands were inside. It's going to be a good block. First down for the Bison with 9.56 to go in the first. McChesney in at quarterback. All right, and McChesney's going to be under center with Lucian behind him and one receiver out to the left. It's Hunter Villa, not Ray Wasella. We're going to have a pre-snap penalty here. Probably going to be a false start against LaBeouf. All right, it is a false start, so that's going to back up the Bison five yards, first and 15. Yeah, the Bison need to keep their head up. It's early in the game. Not the best start, but 
there's still plenty of play time. Yeah, as I talked about in pregame, Harbor Creek had their number last time they played. They won 35 nothing in this field. The buff can't be caught sleeping here. Already down 6 nothing early, and then to start out on offense, a pre-snap penalty. Have to be more disciplined. And handoff's going to be to Aiden Lasek. Cuts towards the right side of the field. I think that'll be a three, four yard gain on that play. Yeah, not much there for Lessig at all. LaBeouf trying to get something going here with the tackle trap. Nothing was doing there. It's going to be a second and long for the Bison. I'm like Dorman checking into the game for the Bison. Single wide out to the right. Lucian behind McChesney under center. Walka coming in motion. Hands it off to Lucian. And he's going to be brought down with only about a yard gain on that play. Yeah, that's just a lead play for the Bison. Not able to get movement off of the ball. And it's going to be a third down and long for the Bison. This is not the situation where you want to be. This is when it becomes an instant pass situation. While LaBeouf has had more success this year passing the ball, you don't want to be in obvious passing situations. It's going to allow the defense to play back. And we don't have the guys for a defense to play back where we can still end up with the ball. Not a good situation here for the Bison. Let's see if they can convert here on their first drive of the game. And Wassell is going to be in at receiver. Ball is going to be on the 39, or 29. McChesney looking to pass. Passes it to Welka. It's actually going to be intercepted. And number 10 for Harbor Creek. We'll see if he gets the pick six on the play, but that was number 10. Mikhail his Sadoom. And what did I just say? Obvious passing situations is not going to be how LaBeouf wins tonight or any other night. Terrible first couple plays for the Bison. Back them up. Put McChesney in a position where he had to throw the ball. And Sidel just completely jumps the route, trying to fit it in towards Wasella. It was red completely. Great job by Harbor Creek here. And they're up two scores already. And it's going to be just short of a touchdown here. Got about one yard to go. Huskies are up 6-0 to zero right now. They have the ball on the one-yard line. Eight minutes and 25 seconds left to go in the first quarter. They are going to go for two here. As Betza is under center. Handing it off to Brown, and he's going to be stopped just short. So Harper Creek able to get two quick scores, but not able to get the extra points on either one attempt was a PAT, and the other attempt was a two-point conversion. And they're going to actually say that he didn't get in the end zone, so that was actually first and goal. Alright, and Betza comes in. Seven fifty left with a running clock in the first quarter right now. And Trouble on the snap. snap. And despite Betson not being able to handle the ball, the ball's gonna bounce into the end zone and the Huskies fall on it. Touchdown Harbor Creek here with seven thirty eight to go in the first quarter. Joe Holtz, that makes the score. Huskies twelve, Bison zero. Not the start that the LaBeouf offense and defense wanted. Coach Blows, this is his alma mater. He wanted to come out with a good showing, and so far it has not been there for the Bison. Herbert Creek's going to go for two now. All right, and it looks like they're going for two here. Number two is going to be in at quarterback, Joseph Holtz. And he's going to run it. And the rest are going to mark it as good. So the Huskies are going to be up 14-0 to zero against the Bison with 7 minutes, 38 seconds left. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if we see that more often as the game continues. Joseph Holtz coming in in the Wildcat formation. He's able to get it. That can get tricky sometimes. We saw McGuire come in when you have two quarterbacks. The quarterback snap exchange has to stay perfect. There, Harbor Creek's able to get a good snap off, and Holtz gets the two-point conversion to make up for that missed extra point. It's going to be 14-0. 
All right, I'm going to run a sponsor. This bison broadcast on the Cory Federal Credit Union sports stream is sponsored by Sam Catania Painting. For two generations, Sam Catania Painting has provided homeowners and businesses with professional interior and exterior painting. The Catania Chronicles radio podcast is available every Wednesday and Sunday morning on the iHeart app. Phone 814-866-2600. Best wishes to the bison from Sam Catania Painting. All right, so Harbor Creek capitalizes off of the McChesney interception. They lead 14 nothing. The Buffkins set to receive the ball for their second offensive drive. Merchant Huskins will have their Halloween drive-thru on October 14th to 15th at 68 p.m. Only $5 per car. Please be aware of the Harbor Creek Merchant Huskins. All right, and number 33 for the Huskies, Brandon Konzeki. Yeah, and he has a leg on him. He booted the first one all the way back into the end zone. Let's see if he does it here again. All right, and the kick is off. It's going to be deep again, and it's going to be in the hands of Hunter Villa. And he's making moves up the right side of the field. Good job by Hunter Villa, almost getting to the 25-yard line there. Yeah, good return by Villa. Obviously trouble handling the ball, but he's able to make up for it and get past the 20-yard line. The buff could not afford to start backed up in their own end zone there. And Masella trotting out. He has not seen a bulk of the receiver snaps here early on. It's been Hunter Villa. Right. Looks like there's some confusion on the offense right now. Yeah, they're missing a wide receiver. They only have 10 guys on the field. So it looks like Lasell is coming in. McChesney under center. Lucian behind him. Five seconds on the play clock. They're able to get it off Ryan Welk on the tackle trap. And he's going to be brought down behind the line of scrimmage by a herd of Huskies. Going to be second and 11 here for the Bison. Number 28, Ryan Welk on the jet sweep for the Bison. And the score is 14 to 0. Huskies are leading against the Bison with seven minutes left in the first quarter here. And then someone to take notice of here. That's the starting quarterback for the Huskies is taking shotgun snaps. It's going to be interesting. We have not seen him in the gun yet tonight. It's going to be interesting to see if they continue to bring that into their offense. Classic coming in motion. Hands it off to Lucian, who cuts up the center. Gets a few yards on the play. Yeah, that's just another lead play with Lucian. Going to be third and long here again. It's going to be interesting to see what LaBeouf comes out with. It's going to be another. It's not as obvious as a passing situation, but another clear passing situation. Harbor Creek already has one pick. They're going to try and tee off on McChesney here. And then someone to note on that pick, Nick Cray did get pressure, and another Husky did as well. Line has to hold up. All right, and we're going to have, it looks like, Lasella out wide to the left. Lasek coming in motion. Connor's actually going to keep it, and he's going to be brought down by number two, Joseph Hulse. Yeah, McChesney tried to get the Huskies on the hard count. The Husky did jump, but he was able to get back outside of the neutral zone before he snapped the ball. McChesney ends up with the keeper. We've seen him have success with that. Just nothing there. Going to result in a Lessick punt here. So the first two Bison offensive drives result in an interception and then a three and out. So not what LaBeouf was hoping for. And another Bison... More bison issues here, trying to make sure that they have 11 guys on the field. Someone that Coach Blows cannot stand. And the kick is going, or the punt is going to Irwin for the Huskies. He's cutting up the left side of the field and a hard hit to Aiden Lessick. And Aiden Lessick just hits him down to the ground. 
Great job by Aiden Lessig to stop the play there. Yeah, Lessig with a hit, showing some chippiness here early on. And I honestly don't mind it. LaBeouf needs to show some life, so I don't mind some chippiness here. Make sure that's obviously in the field of play. Don't want anything dirty, but you need some chippiness. Show some pride here. You're already down two scores on the road against a team that you honestly should be beating. It was a good kick by Lessig, but then Irwin was able to make a couple bites and look silly. Good tackle by Lessig to clean it up and end that play. And five minutes and 12 seconds left in the first here. No substitutions to note for the Bison. Jordan Irwin out wide at receiver to the right. And it's going to be a handoff cutting up the left side of the field. Number one, Lance Brown. Lance Brown continues to have success building off of a strong first drive. And number 18, Connor McChesney, gained five yards on the plate. The second down and five for Harbor Creek from their own 49-yard line. And if you're Harbor Creek, the only negative play you've had on offense was a fumble. But guess what? That fumble resulted in a touchdown. So Harbor Creek's been able to do whatever they want to do on the offensive side of the ball, whether it's running up the middle with Lance Brown, whether it's play action with Betza. They've been able to have a lot of success here early on tonight. And it's going to be a pitch out to Lance Brown. He's looking to find an open hole, and the Bison are going to bring him down just about where they started. Yeah, Brown tries to reverse field there. Great job by Caleb Stover, not giving up on the play. He brings him down, does not let him reverse all the way to the other side of the field. Crucial third down for the Bison. Betts is probably going to look to pass here, whether it's play action. I would try and get him on a bootleg again. But Bison have to stay strong here. They need to get the ball back, and they need to get some offense going here in the first quarter. For sure. All right, three minutes and 50 seconds left. Twins to Betz's left, two package in the backfield. And the pass is going to be right in the hands of number four, Jordan Irwin, or excuse me, Christopher Pius. Yeah, a little bit high for Betza, but Pia still should have probably come down with it. Was not facing heavy pressure with Hunter Villa on the coverage. Harbor Creek is going to have to punt here. And we've seen Brandon Kudniski. He's kicked the ball off amazingly on kickoffs. Let's see how he can punt the ball, because if he can pin the Bison back here, the way they're playing, it could get ugly real fast. And there's going to be a flag. And the Huskies are going to have an illegal substitution. It's going to back them up five yards, and it's going to help LaBeouf with some field position here. This might end up being an underrated matchup. You don't really hear this a lot in high school football. But Koniski, the Harbor Creek punter versus Ray Vassella, the Fort LaBeouf punt returner, both seem to be very strong suits for their teams, respectfully. Let's see who wins here in the first matchup of the night. Almost blocked by Caleb Stover. Punt is off to Vassella. And he's just going to let the Harbor Creek Huskies touch it. And it's going to be at about the 15-yard line where the ball is going to start. Yeah, it's down by Hunter Gonda. Vassella had an opportunity to pick it up there. Ended up letting it bounce. However... Once he let it bounce, he was smart enough to back up, knew that he missed his chance and that they were just going to have to take the field position. Yeah, and the Bison not able to get much on offense so far in the game here. Hopefully this drive they can make some momentum. Yeah, the offensive line hasn't been able to get any movement off the ball. There's been nothing going for the Bison. All right, and it's going to be a handoff to Lucian. You can't get anywhere. Yeah, Lucian stuffed at the line by Cray. It's going to be second and ten. Number Bison 40. trying to stay with that lead play. Number 40, Justin Lucian on the carry for the Bisons. Tackle the play yeah, it's rare that uh, we find many teams that we play that can't, uh, or that can stop our Justin Lucian and players like Tristan Harris and that, but we're just not finding much holes tonight to hit. And three minutes left. In the first quarter, scores 14 to zero. The Huskies are leading over the Bison. Bison are going to load the line to the left. Wasella out to the right. McChesney under center. 
And McChesney is looking to pass. Passes it to Ryan Welka, who gets... Oh, it's going to be incomplete. Right in the hands of Ryan Welka. Yeah, Ryan Welka was open down the seam. Great pass by McChesney. Welka, already a couple drops here in the season. We saw him bounce back last week with a touchdown late in the game. There, if he catches it, he only has to break one tackle, and he's gone. Big mistake for Ryan Welka. He's going to want that one back, because now it's third and ten for the Bison, and they're going to pass again. And it looks like Villa's going to come in at receiver. Yep, Villa's in at receiver to the right. McChesney under center. And looking to pass. Has Lucian open. Passes it down the field. Pass was intended for number 15 for the Bison. Rafe Blows was open on the waggle. It was double covered, but did get behind the defense. McChesney laid it out in front of him. Good decision by McChesney. Overshot him by a little bit. But in that situation, you want it to be either your guy or nobody. Good job by McChesney. It ends up going incomplete. You don't want another turnover. However, it is a fourth down for the Bison. Unless it's going to have to punt again. And the ball snapped. Lessig with the punt. And number three for the Huskies, Irwin. Jordan Irwin showing some moves here. Great return. It was a good punt, but he's going to end up all the way up to the Bison 30. Harbor Creek going to have great field position for their fourth drive of the game. Yeah, this is not looking good for the Bison. They desperately need to stop players like Irwin and Lance Brown. They're getting way too much yardage off us. Yeah, and offensively, you haven't had a positive play yet if you're the Bison. If you're the defense, you need to take some ownership here. Make a play yourself. Try and rejuvenate your offense a little bit. Whether that's stripping a ball, whether that's getting a tackle for loss, or whether that's sacking Betsa. Bison need to make a play here on defense to wake up their offense. And Irwin's going to be at receiver to the right. That's under center. Hands it off to Lance Brown, cutting up the left side of the field, and he's going to be tackled out of bounds by McChesney. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, that Lance Brown kid is gliding tonight. He's making it look effortless. He's getting around five yards a pop. Great job for Lance Brown here, because as he continues to just wear down that Bison defense, that's going to open up another play action. We already saw Betsa take advantage of a tired LaBeouf defense when he scored on the opening drive. Two minutes and 12 seconds left here in the first quarter. A long first quarter. Uh, Huskies are looking to score three touchdowns in this just this fourth, first quarter here. And that's under center. Hands it off to number two, Joseph Hulse. Cuts up the center of the field for a few yards. Yeah, we saw Hulse on that two-point conversion come in as the Wildcat quarterback going to try and get him more involved. The more guys you have getting involved on the run game, the easier it's going to be. We've only seen Lance Brown up until now, but you want to get Hulse going. That's the under center. Great job, Hayes. And he's going to be brought down after just a yard or two on that play. Yeah, Lance Brown able to get a couple. That's not the worst result on first down for either side. If you're Huskies, you want to stay ahead of the chains. If you're the buff, you need to stop these plays. It's been chunk play after chunk play for the Huskies thus far. It's going to be second down and eight. The ball's on the 17. A minute 15 left in the first tier. Scores 14 zeros. That's under center. And he's going to hand it off. Yeah, Jace Wallace with the nice tackle. Harbor Tree tried pulling two guards there. If then that happens, if you're the defensive lineman, you need to get in that lineman's hip and just follow him along because wherever the guard's going, that's where the ball's going to be going as well. Great job by Caleb Stover. That was textbook. And 40 seconds with the running clock here. Third down and long for the Huskies. Two receivers to the right. We got 
Irwin. And if I'm Harbor Creek here, I'm just going to give it to Brown again because it's not a chip shot field goal. But from where they're at, their kicker can make it. They're going for a waggle here too. Betts is going to keep it rolling out to his right. Chase Wallace. Oh, my gosh. Chase Wallace lowered his shoulder and delivered the boom. Ball bounces out. Harbor Creek is able to fall back on top of it. But great job at Chase Wallace. We've seen him emerge into the starting lineup. He was not a day one starter, but he's really made a difference here as he's come into the game. Yeah, great job by Wallace. That was an amazing hit. Yeah, Wallace is proving why he's out there. The season started as Ryan Welka and Aiden Lessig at inside, and then Damian Blows and Dominic Stearns on the outside. Damian Blows has shifted out of the starting lineup. We've seen Lessig go to the outside, and we've seen Jace Wallace emerge as an inside backer. And as a former inside backer, I love to see that. That was awesome. Fourth down for Harbor Creek here. I would attempt the kick, but I also would not be surprised if they go for it here and try and go up three touchdowns. All right, and it'll be the end of the first quarter here. We're going to run a sponsor. Fort Leff Football on the Corey Federal Credit Union Sports Room is brought to you in part by Moosehead Pottery. Moosehead Pottery creates a variety of handcrafted pottery. Moosehead Pottery creates a variety of handcrafted stoneware items, including beer growlers, coffee mugs, pour-overs, and much more. Personalized gifts, including Fort Leff Ice and Growlers and corporate branding, are also available. Moosehead Pottery's new store is located at 8270 Peach Street in the Cider Mill Plaza, just a half mile south of I-90. The sunny 105.7 sports stream thanks Moosehead Pottery for their support. Looks like Harbor Creek is going to try and go for it here. It's going to be fourth and five. I take that back. They are going to attempt the kick. I was going to say, with a kicker like they have, this is, like I said, this is no chip shot, but certainly makeable for Harbor Creek. Konecki on the kick. And the kick is up, and it is good. You know, right down the middle, Harbor Creek goes up 17-0 here at the start of the second quarter. Buff desperately needs some offense here. Their defense is going to be tired. Their offense has no momentum, no confidence right now. Coach Wills needs to dial up something here. All right. And 17-0 is the score at the start of the second here. Like you said, the Bison really need to tone in here, figure something out. We'll see what happens here in the second quarter. Funding for this broadcast on the Sunny 105.7 Corey Federal Credit Union Sports Stream is provided in part by the Fort LaBeouf Bison Boosters. Supporting the Thundering Herd since the 1980s, we thank Fort LaBeouf Football Boosters for their support. And if you're Harbor Creek, keep your foot on the gas right now. You have the bison desperate for air right now. Smell blood and end it if you're Harbor Creek. If you're the bison, you need to make a play here. There's been no momentum on offense or defense. Harbor Creek's been rattling off chunk plays at a time. LaBeouf, their best play has been five yards this far. Number 33, Grant Knicky to kick off to the Huskies. And here we go for the kickoff. And the kick is off. And looks like Wasella is going to get the return here. Wasella is going to get a little bit past the 20 before he is brought down. And that is where the Bison will take over. And you know what we haven't seen yet on offense tonight? Ray Vasella. We need to get him the ball. We finally saw him create some explosive plays on offense rather than just on special teams last week. Try and get something going here with him. Dominic Dorman's in at receiver right now, but when Vasella comes in, I really want to see them try and dial up something for him. Yeah, you had a great week last week. I think two touchdown catches. And it's going to be handoff up the center to Lucian. 
Yeah, Lucian gets a few. The Bison line is still tr having trouble getting movement off the ball. All right, and I'm sorry if the stream cut out. We had some computer issues, but it looks like we're good now. Villa coming into the game for the Bison. McChesney under center. And a double handoff. Ryan Welka has room. McChesney gives out a block before Welka is brought down by Irwin. Bison trying to get a little bit cute there with the counter. Going to bring up a third and short for the Bison. And that is going to be good enough to move the chain. So the Bison have their first first down of the game here. As we're a little bit into the second quarter. Definitely not what Coach Blows expected out of his offense. But let's see if they can continue and try and build some momentum off of their first first down. Okay, and Macell is going to be on that receiver to the left. Wide splits to the left of the line. They are going to pull. It's going to be Lessig. Blocker out in front of him. Lessig has room. It's a full race. Lessig finds the corner. Tiptoeing and finally brought down at the Harbor Creek 35. Good run by Lessig. And when you have wider splits like that, that typically means there's going to be movement somewhere on the offensive line. LaBeouf, great job pulling the lineman, getting some movement, and Lessig able to capitalize. Great job for the Bison. Back-to-back -back first downs. All right. And 10 minutes left here in the second. 17-0. Harbor Creek is losing right, or winning right now. It's a trap play. Lucian up the middle for five. Good job by the LaBeouf line. Finally getting movement. You actually saw Nick Cray back off completely. He ends up seven yards down the field. That doesn't happen a lot. Great job by the Bison here. Finally starting to build something. And they couldn't come at a better time right now. Down 17 nothing. Cray's coming off the field right now for the Huskies. If I'm LaBeouf, I'm continuing to run it down their throats. Run it right up the middle lead. This is your chance. Cray's off the field. You want to run a trap again. You want to run a lead. Some confusion on the buff offense. Chesney under center. Classic coming in motion. Hands it off to Lucian, who has some room up the center. Fighting for a first down. I think I'll have it. Yeah, so the Bison do end up running lead again, taking advantage of Cray being out. And that's going to be a first down for the Bison. Three first downs in four plays. That's really good for the Bison offense. It's more of what we expected when we came here tonight. Let's see if they can continue it as Ray Wassell checks into the game. And nine minutes left, there's a running clock. The Huskies up 17. Chesney under center. Sell out wide to the right. And it's gonna be a run. Yeah, Justin Lucian not going down easily. The Huskies found that out the hard way there. He ends up stopped after four. Still did not end up on the ground though. All right, so we got second and seven from the Husky 16, just under 8.30 to go in the half here. McChesney's going to be under center, Villa out to his right. And here comes Mc, er, Welka. Yeah, Welka on the tackle drop. Gets a handful, and it's going to be third and short for the Bison. There's going to be a flag on the play. Waiting to see the call from the officials as they discuss. And second and seven with the ball on the 16-yard line. And the Bison are starting to move back here. I'm thinking a hold. And Cray will come back in the game. Yeah, and LaBeouf ends up getting called with a personal conduct. Ryan Welka receives the penalty, and that's a backbreaker. That moves him back 15 yards. It's going to be second and very long here for the Bison. So the Bison go from around the 14 all the way back to the 26. Not what LaBeouf needed there. 
He finally gets some offense going. I didn't see what happened, but that's just an undisciplined play. You need to keep your mouth shut. Keep everything sportsmanlike out there. You're down 17 nothing. right? There's not really much room to be talking anyway. Not big mistake, and Coach Bose is going to give Welka a word here as Dominic Stearns comes into the game for the Bison. We saw Lessig get chippy earlier, but he also did it within the rules of the game. You can't afford a 15-yard penalty, especially when your offense has been struggling. And Lessig, or... Dominic Stearns. Stearns. Yeah, I like the call of fresh legs. We don't see him get the ball a ton. We actually see Damian Blows get the ball more than he does. So Stearns comes in probably just for a play or two. See him get the ball, see what he can do. Always looking for that spark. And Dorman's going to come on the field at receiver to give McChesney the play. Stearns stays in the game. Welka's still out. Chesney under center. Yeah. Lessig coming in motion. Hands it off to Lucian. Has some room. And not being able to brought, be brought down easily. It's going to be brought down. I think that's going to be... Yep, that's going to be a first down. Yeah, Lucian on the lead just bouncing off a of tackler. It's a good block by Stearns. When you have Justin Lucian, you just need to chip your guy a little bit. You don't need to pancake him. Stearns does that and then gives Lucian just enough of a crease to bounce off of a couple guys and barrel forward for the first and goal. And Bison actually have a chance here to score. This is going to be crucial if they get this. And... We got Ray out to the right at receiver, excuse me, left. Lucian with the ball, just gets tripped up after a couple. Gonna be second and goal for LaBeouf. Phila checking into the game for the Bison. And six minutes left, the Huskies are leading 17 to 0. Eight yards to go. It's going to be second down, and the ball's going to be on the eight yard line. Lessick looking for room. Crowd of Huskies there, and he's Bumble. stripped. The Bison do get back on top of it. Number 80 for the Huskies, Dylan Chatwick, able to get the ball out. Great job. If you're the Huskies, you need to be pounding away at that ball. They were there, and Lessig ends up coughing it up. Bison lucky to get it back. That's our second mental mistake here on this drive as Welka comes back onto the field for third and goal. Husky crowd coming alive, and McChesney's going to call a timeout as he saw the play clock winding down. LaBeouf's first timeout of the half with 5.04 remaining. That's a veteran move by McChesney. You see that play clock winding down. Take it into your own hands. Call a timeout. He knows how important this play is. They can't afford to go back another five yards, whether it's just to attempt a field goal or whether it's to try and score here. You don't want to be back another five yards. We saw an obvious passing situation earlier on in the game, and what did it result in? A big-time interception for the Huskies. Good job by McChesney, not letting them get backed up too much. This broadcast on the Fort Lafayette Bison football on the Corey Federal Credit Union Sports Stream is brought to you by the Auto Body Outlet on Route 19 across from Kaplan's in the Waterford Town Place. Phone 814-679-4040. The Sunny 105.7 Sports Stream thanks to the Auto Body Outlet for their support. All right, the Bison offense coming back onto the field here for third and goal. No big time substitutions, but Ray Wasella is in the game as he should be on a crucial third down like this. Probably looking to pass here, so you want your best receiver out there. And then in at tight end, we do have Connor Sells. I like that move too. We haven't really seen him on offense, but he had a big catch last week. And a good matchup we got with Sella and Erwin. McChesney's going to try and keep it here. 
McChesney lowering his shoulder and barreling forward ends up at the four yard line. That was a waggle. McChesney decides to keep it himself, trying to get another one of those huge runs like he did against Fairview. It is going to be fourth and short here. So we have a Husky down. So injury timeout. Hope the Husky is okay, but Coach Bloss has a decision to make. Do you want to go more the aggressive route and try and go for it? Or do you send out the senior Isaac McGuire out there to attempt the kick and trying to make it only a two-score game? It's going to be interesting. If you're more conservative, you're obviously going to go and try and kick the kick. But you haven't been able to get any offense here tonight. While you're down on the field, you don't know the next time you're going to be down here. Do you try and just get six out of it rather than just a mere three? Yeah, I mean, they've dug themselves into a pretty bad hole already, so I would go for it here. I mean, there's only four minutes and 53 left in the half, and they're down two and a half scores, so in my opinion, if I were the coach, I would go for it here. Yeah, I agree. Your offense has shown zero life so far. Try and score here. Worst that happens is you don't get it. All of a sudden, Harbor Creek's going to be backed up, and then, and then after that, you can try and force a safety. All right. So support forward coverage of Bison's football action on the Sunny 105.7 Corey Federal Credit Union Sports Stream comes from JH Auto Parts Napa. Your local Napa store stocks auto parts, tools, and equipment, and other items for heavy-duty trucks, marine, and farming equipment. Located at 12661 Route 19 South and Napoline.com, the Sunny 105.7 Corey Federal Credit Union Sports Stream thanks JH Auto Parts Napa for their support. And the Bison are going to go for it or at, or just a little bit ahead of the three-yard line here. Dominic Dorman in the game. And here we go. We got Lessig barreling up. And Ooh, it's going to be close. I don't think he got in. It's going to be the ref had a better angle. And they're not showing touchdown. They're saying he's short. Number 32, Aiden Lessig got the carry to pull him up. And they're saying that was only third down, so it's going to be fourth and very short. Now you really have to go for it. Chesney in at quarterback. I just want to see quarterback sneak. We've seen him score on that a few times already this season. Just send your quarterback up over the middle. And Masella in at receiver. Harbor Creek crowd getting loud here. Four minutes to go in the half. McChesney does barrel forward. There's a flag on the play. McChesney got in. Let's see if it stands. Yeah, great call by LaBeouf just to go in with the QB sneak. Let's see what the penalty is. Yeah, McChesney having a really successful year with his uh, quarterback keepers. He's gained a lot of yards for the Bison off that. It's going to be an illegal procedure call against the Bison. It's going to back them up five yards, and Coach Blows is electing to send out his senior kicker, Isaac McGuire, down 17-0, above trying to get on the board here. McChesney is the holder. We noted that last week with Carson Pepe out. He's typically the holder. McChesney in now. He had trouble with one of the snaps last week. Other than that, he was clean. Let's see if they can get a clean snap off and a good kick. All right, the ball is snapped. The kick is up, and it is no good. McGuire missed the kick on that one. Yeah, missed it a little bit left. That's not what you want to see from your senior kicker. He's actually one of the stronger kickers in the county. Bad miss there, and the Bison stays scoreless, down 17-0 with 3.41 in the half. Yeah, that's something we really didn't need. So three minutes, 41 seconds left in the half here. For the Buck Bison football on the Sunny 105.7 Sports Stream is brought to you by LM Wander and Sons Landscaping. Providing landscaping services, patio paving, grounds maintenance, and much more since 1980. Phone 814-864-5507. Online at Sons.com and on Facebook. The Sunny 105.7 Sports Stream. Thanks, LM Wander and Sons, for their support. All right, so Bison down 17 nothing with a few minutes to go in the half as we have a pitch to Brown. Brown makes a couple it's tackles a miss. And uh, I think that's going to be in the Bison's hands. Yeah, that's the, really crucial. The Bison, just after finally getting their first positive offense of the game, they're able to force a turnover and take over here. 
Bison need to end up with points on the board. They're five and one. This Harbor Creek team's two and four. There's no reason to be down 17 nothing. It's been sloppy by the Bison. They've been dominated on both sides of the line. Bison need to get something going here. And the score is 17 0. If you're uh, Adam Ripley. And I did notice that uh, Lance Brown was holding his, it looked like his peck, so hopefully he's okay. He's crucial for the Huskies. And Lucian has some room up the center. Great run by Lucian there. And finally, the offensive line getting movement off of the line of scrimmage, pushing back the Huskies. Number 40, Justin Lucian on the carry from Corbin Buff, back with the Huskies for number two, Joe Hulls. Hull springs him down, the Wildcat quarterback for the Huskies. 3.09 to go, and clock is running. Chesney under center. Vasella out to his left. Going to pitch it to Lucian. Lucian going to his right. And he's going to be brought down around the first down marker. And it is going to be good enough for a first down. The Bison moved the chains. Good job by Lucian there on first down. Two minutes and 50 seconds left here in the first half. The Huskies are leading 17-0. to zero. And if you're LaBeouf, honestly, slow things down a little bit here. As long as you can get points on the board, that's okay. You don't want to let Harbor Creek respond. But they just need to make sure that you get points on the board. Still scoreless are the Bison. And McChesney under center. One receiver out to the right. And it's going to be Welka. Welka barreling forward for five. That's the first we've seen of him since he got called for the unsportsmanlike penalty. Good run by Welka as Wasella checks back into the game for the Bison on second down. And we're just about to get to two minutes here in the first half. Chesney under center. Sell out wide to the right, looking to pass. Aiming for Russell in the back, and it's going to be incomplete. Yeah, great coverage by number 19 for the Huskies, Hunter Gonda. We saw him as the gunner earlier on make a play. Russell did everything he could. Chesney given his wide receiver one a chance to make a play on the ball. Great coverage by Gonda. Third down for the Bison. Third and four. Ball's on the 14-yard line. Be crucial to get this first down here. Put us in some good position. And Lucian's going to get the ball. He's going to definitely have enough for the first down. And cutting to the end zone is Lucian. There's also going to be a flag on the play. So we'll see what happens here. Yeah, and that flag was late. That flag came out as Lucian was walking into the end zone. This could be another backbreaker for the Bison. I think it is going to be up against LaBeouf. Coach Blows questioning the refs. Yeah, and the Bison just not having good luck tonight. Any momentum they get, it just gets brought right back. All right, so they're going to end up calling a low block on the defense. That's a play that just recently became illegal. LaBeouf's obviously going to decline as Lucian scored. LaBeouf is on the board. The touchdown stands. An extra point pending. The Bison are going to be down by 10. McGuire trying for the redemption kick. And the kick is up. It is good. So this one does go through. Bison down 17-7 with 1.41 to go. Finally got points on the board. As I mentioned, you don't want to leave that much time on the clock, but at this point in the game, you just needed some points. You needed to get some momentum. The Bison do that. Now let's see if their defense can make another play. Good job by our offense, like you said there. And now we just got to hold it down on defense. Hopefully we... Make sure the Huskies don't score on this drive. Come out the second half. Strong. And kicking team comes out. Got McGuire setting up the ball. And 
so they're going to enforce the penalty yardage here on the kickoff. So the Buffs actually going to be able to kick off from the 45, the Harbor Creek 45. Should be able to back up Harbor Creek here, especially since we know LaBeouf is able to really get creative on their kickoffs, kicking to certain points in the field rather than just booting it. And the whistle is blown. McGuire with the kickoff. It's going to be a short little kick. Right to number 24, Jake Powers. Yeah, and that's going to go down as an onside attempt. That's their second onside attempt of the game. We saw them open up with it. Not successful in either one. Harbor Creek's going to have good field position with 1.39 to go in the game. Or in the half. Yeah, good thing is, though, Bison will get the ball at the start of the second half here. That's going to be under center. Irwin out to his right, the lone wide receiver. And... The ball gets coughed up again. LaBeouf's going to take over with great field position again. Number 35 was on the carry for Harbor Creek. Bison need to get moving now. I mean, they, they have a chance again to score here, but only a minute and 30 left to go 33 yards. I think they can do it, but this will put them in great position if they can score on this drive here. Yeah, up until just around three minutes left in the half, it was all Bison mental errors. Now we see two mental collapses coming for Harbor Creek. Want to, do you want to open this window to fix the focus? I think it's this one. Ooh. Hey, Chesney under center. Going to pitch it to Lucian. Lucian out to the right. They just scored on this play. Lucian bouncing off one tackler. Going to have enough for the first down. He's going to be brought down around the 21-yard line. I don't know if we can open the window. And folks, we do apologize for the lack of focus on the camera. We're working to solve that currently. Bison are going to have trips to the left. We can move the camera. Trouble over. on the snap. McChesney looking to pass. Floats it into traffic and it's going to be picked. Irwin stiff arming, finally brought down by Villa after the 23. And McChesney just threw that one up there for grabs. Not a great decision by Connor. His throws his second interception of the game. All right, folks, we're going to try and see if that helps the lack of focus that we've had in the first half. Once again, our apologies. Yeah, and it looks like that was it. I think it was just picking us up in the reflection of the window there. And that's a real shame for the Bison there. That they had to, or they threw an interception. So Harbor Creek with 104 to go. Back to back turnovers fumbles on both possessions. They're going to hand it off to McAdoo again. And McAdoo barreling forward for a handful. Yeah, I don't think uh, I think Lance Brown, uh, yeah, he's on the sidelines right now, so Lance Brown he's holding his pack a few plays ago, so hopefully he's alright for the Huskies. Yeah, he's made a lot of plays for the Huskies here tonight. Obviously going to hope he's okay for the second half, because the Huskies are going to need him. The way Tides have completely shifted here. LaBeouf's still down two scores, but they have all the momentum currently, even with that McChesney interception here. Under 30 seconds to go. Harbor Creek just taking their time here, happy with the two-score lead. That's going to hand it off. And a big hit by Ryan Walka. And that should do it for the first half. Ten seconds to go on the clock. The Huskies are showing no urgency to snap the ball. And why would they? They lead 17-7 here. Looking to pull off the upset against the 5-1 Bison. Harbor Creek, as we mentioned in the pregame, they're not the Harbor Creek of the last few years. They're 2-4. The Smith brothers are gone. Tyler East is gone. All those stars are gone now. Harbor Creek up 17-7 here trying to pull off the upset. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, 
And it looks like we're going to run halftime now. I know we have some bands running. Our jingle power where we play our halftime show actually isn't working, so we're just going to play the band here, it looks like.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big round of applause from the front of the bus here to the south and in the direction of Mr. Dave Cabot. Justin Wooshin, 73 yards on 13 carries in the touchdown. Aiden Lessig, 37 yards on three carries. Passing, Kessler, one for two for a touchdown. HC receiving, Sam Brady, one catch for 48 yards in the touchdown. Two first downs for the Huskies, four for the Bison. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have our win 50-50 ticket numbers. The ticket is 6226302. 6226302. Please report to the session standard. We have the win 50-50 ticket. Again, 6226302. Ford joined alongside by Brandon Miller. Your Bison are down 17-7. 
to the Harbor Creek Huskies. A little bit of a surprise as the Huskies came into the night with a 2-4 and four record. They've had a lot of seniors graduate over the past couple of years, but they were able to get out in front early. And the Bison offense was really held into check. It was They missed a field goal attempt, and then they were able to get on the board. But Bison really struggling to get much offense going. They were only able to score on the short field. <coughs> Brandon Miller has some stats for you. All right. So we got Lance Brown with seven carries and 24 yards. Joe Holes with four carries and nine yards. Justin Lucian for Fort LaBeouf has 13 carries for 73 yards. And Aiden Lessig, three carries for 37 and um, Bessa had one 49-yard play for a touchdown to start off the game. And, um, yeah, it looks like that's all the stats for right now. Yeah, and LaBeouf, Justin Lucian's rush yards, a majority of them coming on chunk plays. He's been held in check just a couple of times. He was able to break free one of them, the touchdown run. Justin continued to try and get him going. Harbor Creek, we saw Lance Brown, their RB1, go down with an injury on his fumble. It was the first fumble of the half for the Huskies. Obviously, hope he's okay. The Huskies are going to need him back. And then Metza, he's only passed the ball one time since his long touchdown pass. And it was a little bit high, but it was a very catchable ball on third down. His receiver just unable to come down with it. Harbor Creek kind of left some points on the board. And if LeBuck can come back here in the second half and show a little bit more life, they're going to live to regret it. And then the good news for the Bison, despite their lack of offense, they are going to receive the ball to start the second half going to be able to try and cut this two-score lead down for the Huskies. Yeah, I think the Bison towards the end of the half had a little bit of momentum going. Both teams not really handling the ball well. McChesney's had a few interceptions and Huskies' problem is the fumbles. We'll see if they can tone that in the second half. But uh, the Bison were looking a little bit better towards the end of the first half there. Yeah, the Huskies have had some sloppy handoffs and some snap miscues. They were able to recover a mishandled snap for a touchdown earlier on in the game. So obviously that didn't hurt them, but you have to clean that up. That's the difference between a 2-4 and four team and a 5-1 and one team. Harbor Creek definitely playing way better than their record suggests. I would say Harbor Creek's showing a lot more light than we even saw from Soboleski's Fairview Tigers. But the Huskies still in this thing for the region. They need to show some life here and get things going. And if you're the Bison, you can't let this opportunity slip away. And number 33, Brendan Konecki with the kickoff. He is off. It is deep to Wasawa. And he's going to let it roll back into the end zone. It's going to be a touchback. Bison are going to start here. And then we didn't see a lot of Ray Wasella on offense like we did last week against Gerard. We saw him get one attempt in the end zone. It wasn't a super catchable ball. He tried to make the most out of it. It was really good coverage by the Huskies. I'd like to see him get a little bit more involved. Ryan Welka and Lessig have been productive when given the opportunities. And then Justin Lucian's Justin Lucian. He's going to be solid week in and week out. Yeah, I mean, uh, Hunter Villa coming up to start again on the second half here. He started the first half as well. I don't know what our receiver coaches are thinking. Maybe they think Hunter has a better block on the run plays. But definitely like to see more of a sell as well. Lessig on the outside zone is going to end up getting two. Going to bring up a second down for the Bison. We have Dominic Dorman coming into the game. I don't know if Lassell, if they're just trying to keep him fresh for defense since the Huskies have the ability to pass when they want to. But a lot of receivers coming in and out of the game. Vasella seems to be a little bit out of the rotation. All right, and Lucian able to get some good yardage up the center of the field on that play. Yeah, we're finally able to see some movement off of the line of scrimmage if you're LaBeouf. They really struggled to move off the ball. Nick Cray and company were wreaking havoc for the Huskies. Bison gets some movement, and then when you have a man amongst boys like Justin Lucian, he's going to always be able to fall forward. Third and very manageable for the Bison. And the score is 17 to 7. Lucella back into the game. No! 
Chesney on the keeper. He looks to be a little bit short. We'll see the marking here. Number 18, quarterback Hunter and that is going to be good enough to move the chains. Bison first down. Good movement. All right, so the Bison able to show some life here to get the second half started. They need to keep that Harbor Creek defense out on the field longer. There was a lot of three and outs and a lot of turnovers in the first half. It kept the Harbor Creek defense fresh and able to allow them to continue to tee off on the buff. And it's going to be a handoff to Welka coming up the left side of the field and a few Huskies there on the tackle. We got Irwin. Yeah, McAdoo and Irwin wrapped him up. Welka is able to fall forward, get positive yardage. That's a great job on first down, staying ahead of the chains if you're LaBeouf. Dorman coming into the game for the Bison. Ball's going to be on the 35. Nine minutes and 50 left in the third here. LaBeouf just looks more comfortable than they did in the first half. They looked a little scared. They looked a little sleepy in the first half. They looked... They're showing a lot more life here as Lucian going to be tackled by number 59 immediately for the Huskies. It's going to be Robert Angelone. And something to note, Lance Brown is back on the field for the Huskies. We were obviously worried about him in the first half. He was hurt on the fumble. He's back in the game, and that's great news for the Huskies offense. And Masala is in that receiver to the right. Boys, you need to sit down, please. We're going to see McChesney on a keeper bouncing off a of tackler. Going to be just shy of the first down. And they're going to move the chains, it looks like. So McChesney, two first down runs. Bison down 17-7 to still, but moving the ball here. Great job by LaBeouf. Finally showing some life here in the second half that was really lacking. Yeah, this, this looks like the LaBeouf team, like how they normally come out. Definitely some good momentum here to start off the half. And Wessex going to get the handoff. Trying to find an open hole on the right side of the field. It looks like he'll get around five yards on the play. Yeah, Lessig showing some patience, letting the blocks develop down the field, able to go north and south when it mattered. Great job on first down. It's going to be a second and three for the Bison. Ball is going to be on the 49-yard line, three yards to go. And if you're reading the body language, the Huskies already look a little tired. They looked a little complacent. They were not looking like that in the first half. And you get the whole defensive line to jump there. And that's going to be an automatic first down for the Bison. Yeah, that was a good job on the snap there, throwing off the defense. Yeah, McChesney almost got them on the hard count in the first half. They were able to get back out in, of, outside of the neutral zone to avoid the penalty. There, not so much. Three out of the four Harbor Creek down D linemen jumped. First down, Bison. So in that receiver to the left, Chesney under center. And it's going to be a handoff to Welka, cutting up the left side of the field. Has some really big yardage, and he's going to come out of bounds at around the 15-yard line, and we're going to have a Husky down on the ground for a minute. Looks yeah, like he's getting up. It's going to be Mikhail Sadoon, who looks a little banged up on the play. He did bounce up. He was the guy with the interception, the first interception on McChesney there. And speaking of McChesney, that's the second time tonight we've seen him get out in front with a block. Connor McChesney, not your typical quarterback. He's not afraid to lower the shoulder. Great job by McChesney there, and here he comes under center, and he's going to keep it, and getting some good yardage. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that wasn't quite as successful as the Fairview run where he just continued to refuse to be brought down, but there, another solid run by McChesney. Bison staying ahead of the chains here. And then for those wondering, our band is here. They did travel as they typically do. All right. Dorman in at receiver to the left. 
Hands it off to Lucian. He is just going to walk right into the end zone. Great drive there by the Bison. And a good touchdown by Lucian there. The score is going to be 13 17. We'll see what we do here. Looks like we're going to go for an extra point. Yeah, Lucian's second tutty of the night. He's going to be close to 100 yards. Definitely going to be able to finish with 100 yards on the night. Lucian, great job. You saw the line kind of collapse in the middle of the field. Lucian's able to just cut it back and walk into the end zone untouched. Bison on the board, cuts it down to a one-score lead if you're the Huskies. McGuire's at your point is up. good. And the Bison are going to be down 17-14 to 14 here. Strong start of the second half for the Bison. Yeah, and it would be tied up if we would have got one of those field goals. Yeah, I think we're still in good position here. And that was a very manageable field goal if you were LaBeouf. You have one of the better kickers in the county and the senior, Isaac McGuire. He was just very wide left for whatever reason. The snap and the hold looked clean. Bison not able to make that kick, and because of it, they are still down in this game. And, you know, I don't want to blame it all on Maguire. I think there's definitely a few plays, you know, by everyone where we could have definitely got some points. But it's high school football. There's going to be mistakes happened. Let's just see how the game rolls out here. Yeah, the second McChesney interception, he just threw it up. For those watching on Amazon Prime last night, Russell Wilson, he did something similar. So quarterbacks are going to make those kind of mistakes, but McChesney just lobbed it up there. Two Huskies were in the area, and one of them was able to come down with it. We saw the earlier on interception by McChesney. Another pooch kick here by McGuire. Harbor Creek's going to fall on it. Number 13, Aiden Takak. And the Husky offense is going to be able to get out there. And a reminder, Lance Brown, the star running back for the Huskies, is returning to the game. He was a little banged up towards the end of the first half. The first Huskies from their own 29-yard line. That's just coming out off the sideline to give his team the call. 6.45 left in the third. The score is 17-14. Huskies have it on the 29. Going to be I formation. It's the first time we've seen this out of the Huskies offense. Going to give it to Brown. Brown bouncing off, but he's going to be brought down by Jace Wallace. The junior who's really made a mark here since he's become a starter. He did not start the season in the starting lineup, but he's been able to crack the starting lineup and has not looked back since. Second down for the Huskies. Good job by the defense. they able to stop Brown. We saw Wallace deliver a boom on Metza earlier on in the game. Actually caused a fumble. Bison were unable to get on it, but Jace Wallace making sure his presence is felt. And it's going to be a pass play. Good coverage, but oh, and it looks like it's going to be incomplete as it bounces in the hands of number four, Christopher Pius. Yeah, that's the second pass towards Pius that he was not able to bring in. The first one was a little bit more catchable than that one, but honestly, if I'm Harbor Creek, Metz has looked good tonight. He's only thrown the ball three times, one of them being the touchdown. But the, and the other two were incompletions, but he's looked good, especially on the move outside of the pocket. I would continue to let him air it out. Keep your foot on the gas if you're Harbor Creek. The Bison look like they're showing life again. Don't want to back off too much. Trips to the left, Metza dropping back to pass. And it's going to be intercepted by Hunter Villa. Great job by the Bison. That is going to be a big play. Hunter Villa with the interception. Great job by the Bison defense on covering this Husky offense passing-wise. Yeah, something similar to McChesney's first interception. It was just an obvious passing situation. It allowed the Bison defenders to kind of back up and play the chains a little bit. Stearns tips it up, and then Villa ends up coming down with it. Another high pass if you're Metza. The Bison get their third turnover in four drives. Good job by the Bison defense being able to create some plays with their offense struggling here tonight. And Dorman's going to be in that receiver. They have great uh, position here on the field. And we're going to hand it off to Lucian up the center. Great run by Lucian. Yeah, the Bison offensive line has come to life. They looked 
terrible, to be frank, in the first half. Now they're finally starting to show some movement, getting guys off the ball. Buff offensive line finally showing some life, and they need it. Big blue. Coach Rimpa used to say to me, you want it to look like a big blue wall or a big white wall just crashing over the defense. We're finally starting to see that on these lead plays. That was not there in the first half. And Lucian again cutting to the right side of the field. Definitely enough for a first down on that one. Yeah, the value of having a back like Justin Lucian, there's not many people that size coming out of Erie County, especially in high school. Justin Lucian, with how big he is, he's always going to be able to fall forward. He's bigger than a majority of the defenders on there. He, heck, Justin Lucian could be a starter on our offensive line, and that's not a knock on our offensive line. That's just how big he is, how athletic he is. He could be a great guard if he wanted to. He's always going to be able to fall forward. And it's going to be a handoff to Welka. Cutting up the left side of the field. And it looks like the Huskies seem to just look like they're getting tired out a little bit here on the second half. I don't know if they got cocky or if, you know, they got on their heads about that last touchdown and this interception, but it's not looking good for the Huskies right now. Yeah, this is what we expected to see from the LaBeouf offense when we made the drive to Harbor Creek. We didn't see it for a majority of the first half. Now Harbor Creek all of a sudden looks complacent. They look tired. Their hands are on their hips. They're showing some poor body language. And if you're LaBeouf offensive line, you're seeing that and you're getting fired up. You know you have them on their heels. Continue to push. And I have a pre-snap penalty. Going to be interesting to see who's it on. And it's going to be an encroachment by the defense. The Bison are going to move forward five yards, and it's going to be good enough for a first down. I think that's the second time that's happened so far. Yeah, and they almost got him another time in the first half, too. Yeah. And that, like I just said, the poor body language is starting to transition. The Harbor Creek defense is tired, and they're showing. And Villa in that receiver. McChesney's looking to keep it. And he doesn't really have much space. So he's going to be brought down with only a few yards on the keeper. Yeah, number 80, Dylan Chwetwek, able to bring him down. And that's something that really we haven't seen from the quarterbacks of LaBeouf. We've seen a lot of quarterback powers. LaBeouf calls it quarterback lead. Um, we saw Max Enders a few years ago do a lot of quarterback sneaks. Last year, we didn't see it a ton. And then the years before that, from Alex Blos at Max, we didn't see much of it either. We saw mostly QB sneaks. Other than that, it was kind of just the Rempa Turry Harris show. McChesney's really found a role here on the rush offense. And Lessick has some open room. Stiff arming Bill. He's going to get a touchdown, I'm pretty sure, here. Yep, the refs are going to. Call it a touchdown. Great job by Aiden Lessick on the run there. And just like that, your Bison have the lead at your point pending. They're going to be up 21-17 to with 322 to go in the third quarter. LaBeouf showing all the momentum right now. Going to be 21 unanswered points if you're LaBeouf. And McGuire really needs to sink this one. And the kick is up. And it is good. Good job by McGuire on the extra point there with three minutes and 22 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Yeah, Isaac able to bounce back from that miss in the first half. Responds with three good extra points. All of a sudden, LaBeouf has a lead, and Harbor Creek is on their heels right now. They need some offense and fast. Looking at their sideline right now, they look depleted. They look defeated. They look discouraged. LaBeouf has all the momentum right now. They're showing life on their sideline. The Harbor Creek sideline is silent. Yeah, and the Bison don't need to get in their head here. They need to, I mean, they're only down or up one touchdown, so they can't be getting in their head and getting all excited and celebrating early. I mean, there's still plenty of play time. You don't want to give up the momentum. Yeah, they're up by less than a touchdown. And that was one of the issues with Harbor Creek. They took their foot off the gas. They started to pull back a little bit and allowed LaBeouf to get back into this game. If you're LaBeouf, you can't make the same mistake. Keep your foot on the gas here. It sounds like they took a little bit for granted how easy tonight would be. Harbor Creek caught them sleeping. They have to end it now. I don't know why we keep on doing these small little kicks. Oh! I feel like it's just giving Harbor Creek some good yardage every time. I guess Borzo is just looking for one little slip up so that we can get a 
get the ball back. But. Yeah, I'm wondering if they saw something on film where Harbor Creek's front line didn't really look good. They weren't always awake and ready for the ball. But I do like them throwing it in there every once in a while. But you're right, getting it, doing it every single kickoff is repetitive, and it's just setting up Harbor Creek with good field position, drive in and drive out. Irwin had a strong first half. The wide receiver for the Huskies has done nothing in the second half so far. McChesney's lined up against him right now. Matt Brown's going to fumble, and the ball's going to have in this Harbor Creek offense is done for. They are discouraged. A fifth turnover out of five drives. The Bison defense is just making plays. The Harbor Creek offense sloppy with the football. They continue to turn the ball over, and it looks like LaBeouf finally is going to show up the way we thought they were going to. Yeah, not good. Not a good job by the Harbor Creek offense. A lot of just bad snaps, bad uh, fumbles. I think that's what lost them the game. I think we wouldn't be where we're at if it weren't for a lot of these ball handling mistakes. Yeah, and opportunistic if you're the LaBeouf defense. It's not really even that they're forcing turnovers. It's more that the Harbor Creek, they're going to actually say Harbor Creek ended up landing on the ball. But my point still stands. They're being sloppy right now with the football. It's not that LaBeouf is doing anything to force the turnovers. They're just being opportunistic when the opportunities arise. It's going to be second down and around 13 for the Huskies. So the fumble does back them up a little bit. And Lance Brown, we saw him come out super strong the first drive. Since then, he hasn't gotten the ball a ton. He's fumbled twice, and he's been banged up. Lance Brown looked like he was going to have a special night. It's quieted ever since. It's going to be Twins right looking to pass. And it's going to be tackled. Looks like about five yards on the play. Yeah, Metza rolling out again. Despite the turnover, I would say he's honestly been their best player here tonight. I would even put him above of Cray. Continue to let Metza have the football because LaBeouf looks wide awake now. LaBeouf is teeing off on the Huskies. Yeah, and the Huskies really need to convert the first down on this play. Yeah, the Bison with 21 unanswered points here. They lead 21-17. to 17. It's going to be third and eight, looking to pass. It's going to be a deep one to Irwin, and it's going to be a bit too far for him. Great coverage by McChesney and Rossella on the play. Yeah, so it's going to be a fourth down for the Huskies as they go three and out. Metzo was just lobbing it up there looking for some hope. It was too far, but there are two Bisons right there, McChesney and Wasella, both on the coverage. McChesney coming out from center field from his safety position. Now he's going to have a chance for a return. And two minutes and four seconds left in the third here, and the Bison are leading 21-17 to over the Huskies. Number 33, Brent Konecki to punt for the Huskies. Brandon Konecki with the punt, and it's going to roll out of bounds at around the 33. Yeah, that's the first miss by Konecki, really. He's been on point so far. A high punt and a very short punt. Going to give the Bison favorable field position here. So the Bison start at their own 33 with 155 to go in the quarter. Once again, 21 unanswered points if you're LaBeouf. They have woken up and come back from the 17-0 deficit. Dorman in, a, in the game, a wide receiver for the Bison. McChesney under center. Loka coming in motion, hands it off to Lucian. Going up the left side of the field. He's going to be brought down with only a few yards gained. Yeah, that wasn't a great job by the line for his lead blockers in Welka and Lessig, but he's still able to get a few. That's just Justin Lucian making something out of nothing, even if it is just a few yards. Making sure that you get positive yardage on every carry, trying to stay ahead of the chains here. At this point in the game, you're trying to slowly start to grind away the clock like we saw them do against Girard. And the handoff is to Lessig. Rolling up the right side of the field, trying to stay up. Looks like he'll get a yard or two on the play. Way to stay up and 
make a little bit of something out of nothing. Yeah, Lesnick is honestly one of the faster bison tailbacks, but he's also big. He has a low center of gravity. He's kind of like a bowling ball. I would like to see him just go north and south, especially on those outside plays. If you get him just crashing towards a linebacker, not many people are going to be able to bring him down. He does a little bit too much dancing, I think. If he would just go north and south sometimes, watch out. All right, and McChesney under center, hands it off to Lucian. Not much on the play there. Yeah, he had a full head of steam, ends up just slipping. It's going to be a fourth down for the Bison. And 25 seconds left in the third here. It's going to be fourth down. Coach Blos is keeping the offense out there. This will be interesting to see, especially since we haven't gained much yardage on this drive here. Yeah, we've seen McChesney have some success on the hard count. Wouldn't be surprised if we see trying to get Harbor Creek to jump off sides. If they did jump off sides, it would be a first down. And LaBeouf going to let this go to the fourth quarter, and we'll see what their decision is. McGuire is talking to Coach Blos. Typically, Lessig does the punting, so we might see something creative. I don't know if they have this in the playbook, but something with McGuire and McChesney out there could really confuse a team that is aware that LaBeouf has two capable quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, they might be thinking, you know, McGuire is the kicker or something, and McGuire actually ends up passing it. Or yeah, that would be a huge hiccup by Harbor Creek since Lessig does typically do the punting, but... As we make the transition to the last quarter of the game, we do want to give a shout out to Coach Jeff Nichols. He is in the booth right now coaching. Coach Blows is the acting head coach still. He is down on the sideline. But Coach Nichols making the transition back into coaching. He's in the booth currently cheering on his guys and making any contributions he can. So we continue to bless Coach Nichols and hope that his recovery is going well. And LaBeouf coming out with the punting unit now, so it does look like they're going to punt. McGuire is out there to punt, though. And I think you might be on to something here, Brandon. McGuire's out there instead of Lessig. We could see a fake here. All right. And McGuire is going to actually punt it. It's a decent punt. Going to be a great punt. This is going to go all the way to the six-yard line before it is finally downed. And it's going to be down by Hunter Villa, who's had a sneaky good night on defense, offense, and now special teams. So the Bison, not only do they have two quarterbacks, but they have two punters as well. Yeah, and that could be a setup for the future, too. If we get another fourth down, they might think, oh, McGuire's going to be the kicker. And like I said, maybe he'll pass it. Yeah, but as you go down with better coaching staffs, they're going to be able, coaching staffs watch film even at the high school level. It's crazy how obsessive you have to be. As you get down towards teams like Slippery Rock, the D District 10 favorite, you can't just assume that they won't know. So if that's something, if they can continue to do that, that's fine, but then they need to make McGuire the full-time punter. Yeah. Brown here on the carry, trying to protect the football. He's going to get around five. Good carry by Brown there. And we're going to have a personal foul here called on Cray as he blocked Kenny Luma way down the field. The problem wasn't that. The problem was that he ended up pushing him over after the play. And this is going to back up Harbor Creek and make it half the distance to the goal. So Harbor Creek's going to be backed up in their own end zone. I think Kenny Luma had a little bit of acting there. It was a little bit of a flop, but if you're Cray, you're down by four. Your team has no momentum. You can't afford that. You're the leader of this team. Yeah, Bison and I are just doing a great job on the second half. Funding for this broadcast on the sunny 105.7 Corey Federal Credit Union Sports Stream is provided in part by the Fort LaBeouf Football Boosters. Supporting the Thundering Herd since the 1980s, we thank the Fort LaBeouf Football Boosters for their support. All right, so the, your Bison lead 21 to 17. Harbor Creek backed up here, second down at the six-yard line. Just from the spot of the foul for Harbor Creek. That's an under center and eye formation again. Irwin in at receiver covered by McChesney. Metza looking to pass, passes it to number 86. Hayden Delusky able to come up with the pass. And it's going to be third down now. 
Yeah, that was a great job by the Harbor Creek offensive line. You need a pass because you haven't had any offense, but also you don't want to get too risky and risk a safety. We saw LaBeouf take advantage of that against Gerard last week. There, you're able to protect your quarterback, allow him to have a clean pocket, let him roll out, and then throw the pass. Good job by the Husky offensive line. Third down and five, 10 minutes, 40 seconds running clock. Yeah, more manageable third down here. Trips to his left. And looking to pass again. And it's going to be a sack by number 57. I'm pretty sure that's Connor So. Off that's the Aaron Lichtinger. Aaron Lichtinger. So Aaron Lichtinger making the play. Great job. Metzel looked uncomfortable in the pocket from the beginning of that play. And Harbor Crew is going to go three and out. And the buff offense is going to come out. Seven yard loss. And then make it fourth down and 14 for the Huskies from their own three yard line. And from where the Puskies are punting, the own three yard line, this is where you can make a play one of two ways if you're the Bison. One, you can just go after the punter, try and make a play. Kanicki's had a great night until his last punt. Try and block it in the end zone, result in a safety or touchdown. Or you have a really good returner back there in Ray Vasella. Give him a chance to return it. The okay. Bison do keep everybody back here. Looks like the punt's going to be a little bit shorter than normal. It's going to be around the 33-yard line. So Kanicki, a crazy good first half. He's now at back-to-back -back punts that just were not doing it for the Huskies. 32 yard punt for number 33, Brandon Konecki, the first and 10 for Fort Lebeau. So the, the Bison with 9.42 to go. If you can get a long drive here that results in points, all of a sudden the Harbor Creek offense, if they didn't have enough pressure on them already, they're going to have even more. Try and eat up some of the clock here. Justin Lucian, give him the hat trick, let him get in the end zone again. All right, and McChesney under center with Dorman out to his right, hands it off to Lucian, who finds a hole through the center, able to get around six yards on the play. Yeah, that's a basic trap play. Good job by Aaron Lichtinger pulling across the line, sealing off the Harbor Creek Husky defense, and Justin Lucian able to barrel forward close for a first down. We'll start with coming in at receiver. This broadcast for above Bison football playback play on the Corey Federal Credit Union Sports Stream is brought to you by the Auto Body Outlet on Route 19 across from Kaplan's. All right, and Woka with the carry has an open hole, definitely enough for a first down as he's just barreling his way up the field, brought down at around the 15 yard line. Yeah, that's tackle trap. Ryan Welka, we saw him score on a touchdown against Gerard where he just refused to go down. That play looked reminiscent of that. McChesney once again, though, on the hard count. It looked like he was almost able to get him jump. The refs say that they were able to get back outside of the neutral zone before the ball was snapped, though. Huskies avoid the penalty. All right, and handoff. It looks like... Damian, Damian Blows. Blows, yeah. Haven't called his name in a few weeks with him not being the starter on defense anymore. He's honestly been out of the rotation on offense, too. I would like to see more of him. I would say in terms of home run threat, he actually is one of the top backs in terms of that. As we do have Dominic Stearns checking in, so now we're seeing some LaBeouf running backs come into the game that we have not seen a ton of. Yeah, not seen much of Dom Stearns. He is a very strong player, great defender. Um... I know whenever I played, he was a good running back, along with Welka. Yeah, Stearns came in when Welka did have the unsportsmanlike in the first half. All right, and it's going to be handoff to Welka. Yeah, double handoff the counter with Welka, and Welka and refusing to go down. He scores. Now all three Bison running backs have touchdowns tonight. Yeah, great job by Welka on the play there. Able to just not be brought down and keep his momentum forward. It's going to be... So Welka just slightly short of the end zone. 7.40 to go in the game. And I kind of want to see him give it to Welka again because I'm not so sure that he wasn't in the end zone. And McChesney's going to keep it and... Sort of pushes his way through, 
And that'll be a touchdown for the Bison, Connor McChesney, quarterback keeper. And I'm going to give a shout out to our other partner, Matt Still. He's not along with us, but he's listening. The Browns quarterback currently, Jacoby Brissett, he's the best quarterback sneaker in the NFL. Connor McChesney looks like him sometimes because he just finds a way to find the opening in the line and score the touchdown. All right, and McGuire set for the extra point, and the kick is up, and it's going to be good. Good job by McGuire. So the Bison now lead 28-17 to 17 with 7.25 to go. And we don't want to jinx it, but up by two scores, and Harbor Creek has not shown any life in the second half. The Bison have scored 28 unanswered points. They were caught sleeping in the first half by the Huskies. They were able to wake up in time, though, to come back. And it looks like they're on their way to a victory here tonight. Yeah, great job by the Bison able to bring back this game. Again, 7 minutes and 25 seconds left in the fourth quarter here. Bison are leading 28-17. to 17. Yeah, obviously enough time for the Huskies to do something. The problem is they don't have a first down in the second half yet. Yeah. Support for Fort LeBlanc Bison football play-by-play on the Sunny 105.7 sports stream is provided in part by the Corey Federal Credit. Union. The Corey Federal Credit Union would like to wish the Bison the best of luck this season. The Corey Federal Credit Union has been serving the community since 1958. They offer a wide range of financial and banking services for you or your business. The Corey Federal Credit Union is located at 728 Worth Street in Corey. And McGuire is going to kick off here. Let's see if he actually kicks it off and doesn't try the onside. It's going to be not quite as deep as kick, but a little squib kick. Number 25, McAdoo. And McAdoo's going to be brought down around the 34, and that's where the Huskies will get things started on offense because they are desperate for points. Dominic Dorman on the tab tackle. And to finish that sponsor, 56 North Main Street, Union City, 315 Main Street in Spartansburg, and online at www.coreyfcu.org. The Sunny 105.7 Sports Stream thanks Corey Federal Credit Union, a not-for-profit organization, for their support of Bison football play-by-play. Damian Blos is in on defense. He comes in at outside linebacker for Ryan Welka. So Damian Blos finding his way back onto the field. We haven't seen him in a few weeks. And looking to pass. It's going to be just in front of Irwin. Good coverage by Stearns. Yes, yeah, Stearns was trying to go in on the blitz. He had the, the responsibility of that receiver. He realizes it a little bit late, but he's able to run back and try and catch up to him. Metzas overthrows the pass. That can be coached one of two different ways. You can either coach your kid where, okay, you missed your responsibility. Now just go get the guy with the ball and try and force an incompletion. Or you want him to do what he did and then go back out there and try and recover from it. Bison get lucky on that one. Twins to the left, Metza in the gun. Metza looking to pass again. And I think that the defensive backs need to start playing up a little bit on these receivers. I, I'm noticing that they are having some short passes here. Obviously on the first drive there they had, I think, Irwin. No, it wasn't Irwin. Do you remember who it was on the big 49-yard throw? I know we have a stat for it. It was Brady, I believe. Yeah, Sam Brady. But a lot of short passes here. We haven't called Sam Brady's name since. Yeah. All right. And it looks like number 25 being brought down by Chase Wallace. Chase Wallace. And I'll tell you what, that kid is impressing me. He shows explosion. He's honestly the smallest linebacker the Bison have, and by a decent amount. He looks way shorter and way smaller than everybody else out there, but he explodes like nobody else on the defense, and he just makes plays. Great tackle for him. Brings up a fourth down for the Huskies with six minutes to go in the game. Yeah, and it looks like they're going to go for it here on fourth down. Yeah, you have to. I mean, the way LaBeouf's moving the ball, you don't know if you're going to get the ball back the rest of the game. Twins to the right, Mets in the gun. All right, and looking to pass. And Hunter Villa almost with another interception there. Yeah, Villa jumps the route. Pio's finally able to get his first catch. We saw two drops from him in the first half. 
he, there he finally gets his first catch. Villa, I don't hate that by him. I don't know how Coach Blows will feel, but he's jumping the ball and trying to make a play on it. I don't hate it. Just misses it by a little bit. P.S. able to pick up the Husky first down. And the Huskies have their first first down of the game for the second half. Yeah, great job there. All right. And Metzl looking to pass again. And he is going to be sacked by number 57, Aaron Lichtinger. Yeah, he just rolled right into Aaron Lichtinger. sack of the night. Great, or the second half, actually. Yeah, he spins off his back foot there, and there wasn't really much of a reason. I don't know if that was part of him delivering his fake or what, but by the time he spins around, he's right in Aaron Lichtinger's arms, and Aaron's going to take that all day. Yeah, Watt looking, or not Watt, Aaron Lichtinger looking like T.J. Watt out there. Yeah, I mean, if you're not going to have to go to the quarterback, the quarterback's going to come to you. That's perfect. That's the only problem with those rollouts. You need to make sure that you block the guys you're supposed to. Aaron Lichtinger able to just bring him down easily. Second and long for the Huskies. Double twins. And looking to pass. It looks like Harbor Creek's liking the pass this second half here. Pass intended for Irwin. Stearns on the cover. Yeah, just like I wish the Bison would give Ray Wassell the ball a little bit more, I wish the Huskies would give Irwin the ball a little bit more. He's looked great in space here today, especially on the returns. They really have just gotten away from him at times in the game. There's been tons of breaks where he just hasn't gone seen the ball. Like, they won't target him. You have to give your playmakers the ball. Because of that, the Huskies have one first down and zero points in almost the last hour and a half. Yeah. Well, it's going to be third down here, 21 yards to go till the first down. We'll see what the Huskies draw up here for their receivers. They definitely have to pass. Twins to the left. And here we go again, a deep pass. And Hunter Villa almost getting another interception but breaks it out of the hands of Irwin good coverage by Hunter Villa on the play yeah Hunter Villa is developing into quite the player he's getting a lot of time and action on both offense and defense especially with the Carson Pepe injury obviously Ray Wassell is going to move on after this year next year though you're going to have McChesney Pepe and Villa all with tons of varsity experience in the secondary and that's going to transition they're going to be able to make some plays next year when you have three guys who all have the ability plus they have the experience it's rare that you have three guys played this much coming up and they all know how to play with each other they all know all the different positions it's not like they're just a corner or just a safety they're defensive backs and coach Bose has done that on purpose and because of it they're all versatile yeah we were kind of questioning you know why Wasella wasn't in but I think now we see what the coaches are seeing with Villa here in the second half with his interception and great coverage by Hunter Villa. Kanicki's punt is going to bounce into the end zone, so his hot streak really has cooled off here. He looked like a weapon out there, and that's, you can't typically say that about a high school kicker or punter. Kanicki was awesome in the first half. He has fallen off slightly in the second half. And the Bison are going to start the ball, start their drive at the 20-yard line here with 4.09 to go. And honestly, I don't think Harbor Creek's getting the ball back tonight. I agree with you. All right. Bison come out on offense to start the drive here. Looks like Dorman's out to the left, that receiver. McChesney under center. Hands it off to... Er, I couldn't even follow the play on that. It was so good. It was Ryan Wilka. Ryan Wilka. Couple. So Harbor Creek's going to use their first timeout of the game. Going to stop the clock with four minutes to go in the game. This broadcast on the Corey Federal Credit Union Sports Stream is sponsored by Sam Catania Painting. For two generations, Sam Catania Painting has provided homeowners and businesses with professional interior and exterior painting. The Catania Chronicles radio podcast is available every Wednesday and Sunday morning on the iHeart app. Phone 814-866-2600. Best wishes to the Bison from Sam Catania Painting. <coughs> yeah, and if I'm a buff, I'm not going to try and get too cute with it. 
I think that if you run the ball two more times, you're going to end up getting the first down. There's no need to risk a turnover. Try to get 2Q with a pass play or anything. Just continue to run the ball. Can see some leads, some trap. They've had a lot of success on trap. The Bison don't always run that. They'll go a few games where they actually don't run it at all. They've run it a couple times, especially if you have Aaron Lichtinger pulling. I would like to see a trap here. Run some lead, and you'll be able to get the first down. Second and seven for the Bison. Four right. minutes to go. Chesney under center. Hands it off. And this is going to be some good yardage for the Bison. Leading yeah, them Justin to third Lucian. down. Justin Lucian on the lead, so it's going to be third down and manageable here. Dominic Stearns is in the game over Aiden Lessig. Stearns able to have some success blocking tonight. Interesting to see that he's out there in such a pivotal point in the game over Aiden Lessig. So Huskies call their second timeout as they try to keep as much time on the clock as possible as they'll have to score twice here to get back in this game. All right, support for coverage of Bison's football action on the sunny 105.7 Corey Federal Credit Union Sports Stream comes from JH Auto Parts Napa. Your local Napa store stocks auto parts, tools, and equipment, and other items for heavy-duty trucks, marine, and farming equipment. Located at 12661 Route 19 South and Napoleon.com. The Sunny 105.7 Corey Federal Credit Union Sports Stream. Thanks, JH Auto Parts Napa, for their support. All right, so the Bison offense trotting back out there. Connor Sell is in the game for the Bison. We haven't seen him get as much playtime as he did against Gerard, but he has been in there multiple times. Stern still in the game. Welka and Lucian, the other tailbacks. And a handoff to Lucian. That would definitely be enough for first down there. Great job by Lucian to get the first down for the Bison. And the Huskies aren't going to use their last timeout quite yet. But like I said, don't get too cute with it. Run the ball. You're going to get the first down, especially the way you've been able to move the ball in the second half. Sure enough, Justin Lucian gets the necessary yardage. And the Bison lead here with 3.30 to go in the game as the clock continues to tick. And Hunter Rilla coming in to give the play. Something I'm surprised the Bison didn't try and do there was do a hard count. The way that they've been able to get the Huskies to jump, I would have liked uh, McChesney to go on two there and try and see if they could get them to jump. All right, and McChesney's going to keep it. Great little push by the line there for McChesney to get up. I love that kid. He just lowers his shoulder, and he just runs. He keeps his feet moving, and he's always going to find a way to get some extra yardage. Close to a first down. It's going to be second and two for the Bison here. Under three minutes to go now. Connor McChesney. Yeah. A nice run. On this, in the second half, the Huskies really haven't been able to stop the bison once they get you know two or three yards from the first down or even the end zone so we should be able to just keep running out the clock here all right and mcchesney hands it off to lucian and like i said we just barrel up the center for those extra few yards and it'll be a first down for justin lucian on the play yeah, that honestly wasn't a great job by the buff lots of line. Lucian just able to kind of pivot away, able to end up getting around six there. Great job by Justin Lucian. And Dorman's going to come in at receiver to give the play. Got Dorman wide out to the left. And a uh, quarterback keeper for McChesney again. Great job by McChesney. I think that'll be just short of the first down, though. Yeah, another tough run by McChesney. Didn't really have much going there for it. Just kept on driving his feet. Marshall Cole, the senior defensive lineman, was trying to rip away at the ball. Ends up actually tackling the football, trying to get it out. Good job by the Huskies. First down at the 43-yard line. And just a reminder, the score is 28-17. The Bison are leading against the Harbor Creek Huskies. Chesney going to take his time here. 120 left in the game. 
Huskies still do have one timeout, but it looks like they are not going to use it. Ooh, Lucian trucking his way up the field. Good stiff arm. Yeah, he puts Justin, puts Marshall Cole on his butt. And the Huskies call their final timeout there with 1.02 to go. Second down for the Bison. I don't really know what the point is in calling a timeout there unless you're going to tell your guys to just be clean and not get too chippy. You want to get out of here healthy and not do anything on Sportsman Lake. But you're not going to get the ball back in time to probably score once, never less twice. I don't see the purpose. If you're going to use that final timeout, use it earlier on in the game. Yeah. We're going to do a sponsor here. Fort Bluff Bison Football on the Sunny 105. Point seven sports stream is brought to you in part by the Alan Wander and Sons Landscaping, providing landscaping services, patio paving, grounds maintenance, and much more since 1980. Phone 814-864-5507. Online at sons.com and on Facebook, the Sunny 105.7 sports stream. Thanks, Alan Wander and Sons, for their support. So the Bison are going to move to 6-1. and one. The Huskies are going to fall to 2-5. and five. LaBeouf heads to Ohio next week to play St. Clairsville, and that's going to be a good measure to see where LaBeouf currently is. We've seen them play a strong game against Fairview. The Huskies are probably one of the better teams they've played despite their record. They struggled early on. In the second half, they dominated. Let's see where this LaBeouf team really is with some heavy competition next week. And Lucia not able to be brought down as it takes three defenders to bring him down. We're under a minute to go. The Bison only need to run the ball one last time. Victory formation should be good enough for the Bison. Yeah, so St. Clairsville, that's obviously a team that you're not going to see much at all. A lot of teams in Erie County probably aren't even familiar with them. But that also, those are the teams you need to play to get ready for the postseason. Yeah, you got. I mean, you got to start playing. The Bison did terrible the first half in this game. If you, they want to stand a chance against teams like Clares, St. Clairsville. They got to start playing like the second half team here and then some to be able to stand a chance and keep their momentum going throughout the season. McChesney and victory formation does take the nail and that is going to do it from Harbor Creek. Your Bison end up winning 28-17. to They score 28 unanswered with two touchdowns from Lucian, a touchdown from Lessig, and then Connor McChesney with the cherry on top to give the Bison control. Your Bison moved to 6-1. and one. The Huskies fall to 2-5. and five. And yeah, if you want to... Slippery Rock right now is the favorite in District 10. You have teams like GM who beat LaBeouf at Carm Benito. You have Grove City who's not going away anytime soon. If you want to compete against those teams, you need to play teams like St. Clairsville. Playing cash in Titusville is not going to get you ready for them. I know from first-hand experience, you need to face competition in the regular season if you want to have a chance in the postseason. This little buff team has talent. They just need to see how they measure up against some real threats. And we're going to see that next week. Me and Brandon are going to be on the call for that one. Brandon, any closing thoughts? Yeah, definitely good game tonight. Uh, way to swing it around. Um, I think it'll definitely be interesting. You know, the teams are going to get bigger and better. I think this was a good job by the Bison. I think they were a little scared at first. I mean, Fairview is a big team despite them not having the best record. But um, it's a good way for the Bison to use some momentum into the season here and get ready for these bigger and more difficult teams up in the future as we head to the postseason soon. All right, thanks for tuning in on this Friday night. We've enjoyed our time with you. I'm Hayden Ford, and that's Brandon Miller. We'll be with you guys next week. See you.